For many people, myself included, metering is typically the most difficult part of shooting film, uh, ensuring that you get a good, correct exposure. While yes, many times you can just read the meter on your camera, but if your camera is manual or it's a more dynamic scene, it can be a lot more complicated than just reading a single number. It feels like in almost every video that I post, there's someone in the comments asking how I go about metering, especially when it comes to more grandiose, uh, more dynamic range landscapes, um, because it can be quite confusing. Metering for the shadows or the highlights can get quite confusing, especially when they're several stops away. Um, so having a dedicated light meter, I think can really ease that process and make it much more simple and digestible, especially for someone who's maybe just beginning or more intermediate and doesn't really understand the Sunny 16 rule. Or if you're like me, you have a tough time seeing which settings would be best in certain lighting conditions. So for me, having a light meter for those type of photos is a necessity and is the only way that you're gonna get really good results. I think the difference between a really good photo and an okay photo typically is the lighting or exposure, which I think is a testament to how important of a skill it is for you to learn. With that being said, there are some tricks and definitely some equipment that we can use to help us get the best shots possible. While I do want to cover how I meter grandiose, more epic scenes with my Sekonic, I think asking people to buy a 300 light meter, which may be more expensive than their current camera, is a bit of a tall task. And to be honest, you obviously don't need that expensive or nice of a light meter to get uh, good consistent readings. However, this incredibly small Aster Hori, Aster Hori, honestly, I don't really know how to pronounce it exactly, but phonetically, that's what it sounds like. Well, they've created a shoe mounted light meter that comes in at a much more affordable price and is quite frankly, just tiny. Because it is shoe mounted, it's a universal light meter that will fit on virtually on any film camera, whether it be 35 millimeter or 120. For my RB67, which is fully mechanical, metering can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Ooh. And I figured this would be the best means of seeing how this bad boy does. It's the size of like, I don't know, three poker chips or like five SD cards stacked up. I don't know why that's my metric of measurement. I don't really gamble, but that was the first thing that came to mind despite this being rectangular and not a circle. The light meter is really simple. It's directional with the sensor on the front, an OLED display screen to show a myriad of information, a wheel on top for scrolling and selecting said information, and then a single button on the back for triggering the controlling of the device. Oh, it also has a pretty robust uh, clippable hot shoe that should work on most cameras. At the top of the screen, it shows an exposure value, shutter speed, exposure, and ISO. You can swap between the different exposure settings to lock away a value, almost like an aperture priority mode. Additionally, you can have it adjust in real time, but honestly, in my opinion, it's easy to get confused when you're swapping through a ton of different values versus metering when you're ready and in control, so I never really ended up using that mode at all. Before we dive too much deeper into it, let's head out to Big Sand Dune State Park with my buddy Colin to shoot some portraits and some landscapes using this and see how it does. So I first shot a couple photos of him at his mom's lake house, but didn't really get too much footage of it. Despite seemingly how much light the green room had, uh, the meter was actually reading f5.6 at 1 30th of a second, which with the RB mirror slap is far too slow. So I opted to shoot it underexposed slightly at f5.6 at 1 60th just to ensure that the mirror wasn't actually altering uh, the image in any way, shaking it or making it out of focus. With Portrait 160 in the already subdued overcast overhead light, I didn't have too much of an option, but honestly I'm happy with how these turned out. Off to a good start for the poker chips. We then made our way to the Lake Michigan shoreline, where there are these pretty cool large sand dunes nestled between the lake and the actual forest line. sand all over inside <laughs> oh, it's that'd be the end of me <laughs> I'm 
It's like not smooth at all. Oh, there you go. All right, so I figured today would be as good a day as ever to test out the light meter, seeing as it's uh, pretty overcast. Uh, my whole objective is to pretty much just let the light meter do its thing and use the exact meterings that it's giving me uh, to shoot the photos uh, to see if the exposure is correct or not. Normally when I'm shooting, I use my Sekonic light meter and get enough information between the highlights and the shadows to determine some middle ground to shoot at to get the best exposure. But I think the best way to test this will be to just let it kind of do its thing and then see how much we'll have to adjust in the future. I just shot a roll of Portra 160 in the RB67 and then loaded a T-Max 400 roll, but the sun is quickly setting. So we're gonna get uh, cracking on some of these shots and see what we can get. So when I was waiting for these photos to come back, I was pretty nervous that the light meter either wasn't going to work as effectively as I was just banking on, or that I had shot everything just out of focus or something stupid, but thankfully I think all the photos came out really well. I think part of my anxiety that day attributed to thinking my Sekonic would see me uh, walking around with the Muse and kick my ass. I've been so used to being super thorough with the Sekonic, um, metering for shadows, highlights, and then the middle gray to ensure that I'm getting a fully exposed, correct scene. Um, but with this thing, obviously I just had to kind of shoot in a general direction and hope that it was uh, accurately reading the scene based off of how much light was there. Given it was an overcast day, so it wasn't working extremely hard um, with crazy dynamic range, I do think that this thing has earned its trust for being able to throw on a camera and just trust it like it would be any other camera meter in body and just kind of rip away and see what happens. I think it's a serious legitimate candidate for being a really reliable light meter, um, especially if you're not using one at all, this thing will certainly give you um, better exposures than just you guessing or using the Sunny 16 rule. Some of the photos of Colin, while I don't really do portraiture too, too much, I think turned out really well. And being able to have the light meter equipped on the RB as we trekked out to the sands was really nice. Not having to carry the Sekonic around my neck and just be kind of bogged down with a whole nother process of metering. Um, and just being able to push the button on this little guy, trusting that it would give me the reading, was kind of a definitely more relaxed process of shooting the RB67 than I'm used to. I can totally see this being super, super nice for me when I'm out in the mountains and I wanna take portraits or macro shots of something, but I don't wanna bring extra equipment on top of the massive RB. Every little ounce counts when you're lugging an RB on a hike and even the difference between my handheld meter and this clip on one, I think would make quite a big of a difference. I especially like these two shots of Colin and I'm excited to shoot some more portraits this upcoming year on this bad boy with this light meter equipped to it. Just to be totally transparent, a story actually sent me this to review, um, but it's not obviously a paid promotion or any ad or anything. They just sent it to see what my true unbiased opinion is. And honestly, I've been really impressed. And I think that these little light meters uh, moving forward can be a really valuable tool for any film photographer, especially if you don't have a light meter as of now. I was honestly a little skeptical that I would find a use for it or could justify kind of replacing my Sekonic, even just for one shoot to give it a test. 
but I think with its size, its price point, and its ability to get slotted on any camera, especially a big one like an RB that doesn't have a light meter, uh, the use case for it for me goes up exponentially. And now given that I've seen the photos back, I think that the light metering on it, again, granted it was an overcast day, so it wasn't the most difficult situation. It really did impress me, honestly. Like I said, when I was shooting it, I just pointed it, uh, metered it, and then would just shoot it at that to really see um, if, you know, using it kind of haphazardly or spontaneously would still render good results. As I know many people who are just starting um, using film or using a dedicated light meter, it can be confusing metering. With that being said, I'm excited to give it a shot in some more grandiose epic landscapes, especially when I'm headed out west to the Rockies. I think testing this when the highlights and shadows are five or six stops apart would be a true test to see what this thing actually can do for metering in those more dynamic scenes. With that being said, Aster Hori actually hooked us up with a discount code. So if you're interested, make sure you check it out down below and pick these one up using that code. So let me know what you think of this little light meter down below. I know I've seen some other companies come out with some similar ones. And I think that this style of light meter can be really easy to get into for someone who doesn't really know what they're doing when it comes to using a light meter, especially as film photography gets more popular. Seemingly the light meters are getting more and more expensive for the nicer ones that in my opinion are the most worthwhile. Whereas this thing comes at a really affordable price, is super versatile and is obviously super tiny. Otherwise, that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. Let me know down in the comments if you use a dedicated light meter and what brand you use. I'm always interested to see what kind of equipment you guys are using and you guys always bring something new to my attention that I didn't know prior to the video. Otherwise, that'll wrap it up for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay shooting. See you in the next one.